Hey pilots, hope you're having a stellar time in World of Warplanes. New marathon coming up and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that in this video, but primarily this is about some of the frustrations I've had in the last couple of weeks in the game, uh, which share a common theme. <laughs> that theme seems to be um, at its heart just one of the things that really is a pet peeve of mine and that is players not playing the game. Uh, and it may seem strange to think, you know, you're loading into the battle, you've got an airplane. What do you mean by not playing the game? Well, it takes a couple of different forms. One of them you're going to see in this battle. So I'm not going to do a lot of battle commentary here, although you're welcome to watch as things go off in the background. Um, but uh, more so, um, we're going to talk about some of those different ways in which uh, that might happen. Uh, the first is that you have some sort of private goal that doesn't mesh with winning or playing the game in the way that the game is intended. So what would be a good example of that? <clears throat> so, for example, uh, we were asked recently about uh, the marathon missions from the last marathon, what fits, what doesn't fit. My two cents in that was turret kills, for example, don't fit because then the player spins the match in it, probably a bomber, maybe a ground attack aircraft, not actually trying to capture zones, but just trying to get turret kills. And so as a result of that, they actually handicap their team with their gameplay, right? They're not playing the game in the way in which it was designed to be play and then wargaming incentivized that with a mission right and i'm happy to say in the new marathon that doesn't take place the missions are all missions that can be completed while trying your best to win the game and i think there's some kudos they deserve for that uh, because that has not always been the case in the past with missions i would love to see the dailies uh, redone to take this into account as well. I think that'd be super helpful. A number of the dailies are, are contributors to the issue I'm talking about. This could also be private goals that players have. And sometimes those are fine. They're fun, right? But sometimes they work contrary to the game as well. Let me give you div divergent examples here, right? Let's say I decide <clears throat> I'm going to um, play the game and I'm going to start at the tier two, right, with the very lowest tier premium. And I'm going to switch tiers with every victory and I'm going to see how long it takes me to get a win at, you know, with a tier nine premium, just going to go up the ranks. Right. Um, that actually isn't hurting anyone else's game or my game really. Right. As, as we play and it's just, you know, creatively engaging in, in what planes you choose, maybe, right. That sort of thing or a challenge for yourself. Uh, maybe to just, you know, how many sectors can you capture? Something like that would dovetail well within the game itself. Right. Uh, it, things that are examples that don't charter well in terms of personal goals, right? Like, I'm going to get as many personal points as I can. Well, personal points don't actually correlate to wins. So, so if your goal is just to get personal points, you might actually hurt your team. You might actually hurt your team's chances of winning. Now, if you're a smart player, you can probably pick the right plane for that, play to your strength and roll, right? I'm going to get a zero, something like that. That doesn't. That, that's the best thing it can do for the match, and it dovetails nicely, right? So that sometimes happens, but it could also be a goal, personal goal that doesn't fit for anything, right? Um, maybe your, your personal goal is uh, I'm going to get a, a Russian bomber because they're a little more maneuverable. I'm going to tank it out with equipment and the goal is to see how many ram kills I can get in one game. And that may be fun for you personally, but it detracts from the experience of literally everyone else in the game, right? Your team is frustrated. The enemy team gets frustrated because they probably get supremacy because you're doinking around and the game is short and then they have a hard time finishing their missions and et cetera, et cetera. So personal kind of um, agendas, personal quests can be frustrating for teammates and everyone else in the game. And that can be one thing. Uh, that's one. Two is one I ran into last week from a, a player that I consider to be pretty good, a uh, player that I have on my friends list. Uh, but that player was not uh, utilizing any ordnance in their Corsair. They were flying a Corsair with no ordnance. And uh, the end result of that was, you know, they were not able to play very well in the match. They did very little to influence the match, not because they were necessarily a bad pilot or anything else, but because they had no ordnance on their plane. And when I reached out to the player and asked about it, the response that I got was, I don't have enough credits to load ordnance. <clears throat> I'm trying to make credits, you know, build my, my supply, and I don't have, don't have the ability to do that. And I don't want to debunk that myth. So this is step two here. Let me debunk that myth. Uh, Wargaming titles, including tanks, um, often the controversy in tanks is gold ammo or premium ammo, which you can buy for credits. And people complain you need to have a premium account then to, to really run gold or premium ammo. And that's actually not true in terms of the mechanics of the game. If you 
uh, take a shot with gold ammo and you actually land the shot, you make more silver than the shell cost. You'll always gain money. And so the goal is to have a high enough accuracy ratio to actually kind of break even and or gain with that. And the same is true really in World of Warplanes. The cost of loading ordnance on your plane is so small compared with the benefit you get out of it, how much six silver you will recap, recap, uh, recoup in the match, I guess I should say. Um, bad loss coming up here. Strato's got my number on this. <laughs> On this thing i beat him earlier um i caught him on unawares and uh i thought i had him in a better i thought i had a better maneuver build than him and so i really sped up here and then dove in a spiral and what i was trying to do is get him to overshoot me so that i could outmaneuver him again and it turned out i badly miscalculated it turned out that um that was not actually how he had the plane set up and so as a result of that even though i'm bleeding speed and twisting here um, I'm not more maneuverable <laughs> than him, and he eventually gets around on me and kills me. But uh, anyway, that's what's going on in the background here. Uh, good game, Strato. Uh, excellent. Well played. <clears throat> so anyway, you know, you can put the ordnance on, and you will actually make more money. By not putting ordnance on your multi-roll or whatever else, you're actually going to make it harder to flip zones, and that will be difficult, and you will impact matches negatively by doing that, right? So... That's uh, the second thing that I've encountered that was frustrating. <clears throat> and I'm just going to say now, you know, I, I don't agree with that. I think you should put the ordnance on your plane, play the multi-role the way it has meant to be played, uh, the way that will actually do best uh, in terms of the match. If you don't believe me, um, you know, here's a, here's a time-limited offer. Uh, it's uh, Monday, the 16th of September when I'm recording this. You know, I am happy to uh, buy you some premium time so that you can... Um, make sure that you get enough silver to you know, have a little bit of a back stock <clears throat> so that you can equip ordnance on your plane. Um, that's just something that needs to happen. The same is true really for consumables. You'd be surprised uh, when you use consumables how much more you can, you can do within the game and how much that will impact your bottom line. The end result is all the consumables and warplanes outside of the premium ones, which cost gold, right, are designed to help you get more out of your match. Um, and so my encouragement is for you to use them. Uh, then that might be a hat tip to one of the frustrations I had in this match as you look at the Tempest here. I'm gonna ping the map, um, just saying, hey, you know, uh, thinking multi-roll, he's got ordnance, maybe you can go make a, make a dent in that. There's a plane over the plant, that's 60 points. And then you can do some ordnance runs with the Tempest. You might can get at least halfway through that, right? Or at least uh, help with it. So at this point, we're up four to one, but the reality is we're so far behind, right? It's been such an uphill battle um, that I'm not sure we're going to make it. And that is the one zone left, right? So if we can go ahead and start flipping it um, and our bots get there, awesome, right? That could be great for us. We're at stall, uh, squall line now. So that's the second one I've encountered is, is the no ordinance thing. Um, the third one I've encountered um, lately that's been frustrating is just... Um, well, it's, uh, it's people not playing the planes the way the planes were meant to be played. And that sort of goes into a personal agenda, but it could also be a result of not knowing how to play the plane. Um, and that might be, you know, turn fighting in a heavy fighter and that, that causing some issues. Um, and that uh, turn fighter, that was my fault right there, by the way. I did not think that I was going to uh, loot, be in a ram situation there. So this loss is partially my fault, spoiler alert. It is a loss. Um, uh, I really thought I could get him. And I was just wrong. Probably maybe part of my frustration and desperation in the moment. Uh, but uh, that, you know, possibility of, of not doing um, well because you have chosen to, to you know, fly poorly or, or maybe you just don't know any better, right? Um, and those can be an issue. So, um, and uh, when you don't know, you end up negatively impacting, as I said, your team. And we're going to get right now to my frustration, which is this pilot right here. And sorry to put you on Blas Cano, but um, there's no two ways around this. It really sucked for me as your teammate to have you in this match doing what you did. So as you guys can see here, Tano, Cano is not running any ordnance on his Tempest at all. It's specialized, but he's running zero. He's flying it as a fighter, one would assume then, which is not terrible. You know, the Tempest does have decent maneuverability and perhaps we could get enough out of this that <clears throat> it would be contributing to a win. And, you know, I have no way of knowing at this point kind of, you know, what's been going on in the match or how he's been doing. But I do have a chance to look now and I realize, gosh, there's no way he could have gone to the mining plane. He wouldn't have been able to do anything there, right? 
So um, <laughs> I'm like, hey, can you grab the, the, the uh, last sector? Because we flipped the mining plant. Can you go grab that rocket base, right? If you can go flip that rocket base, we can still win this game. Or at least I thought until I looked at the score and realized, uh, never mind. You know, we're getting pretty close here. I'm not sure he's going to get there. But even then, even with the advice of, hey, there's not even an attempt that is made. There is just turn fighting going on in a Tempest, which is not a great turn fighter. And there's no ordnance, right? There's three planes left. Two of them are in this zone. One's in the other zone. Our bots are making way there. But at this point, there's no way, right? And now we're headed away from the zone we need to cap to win the match. So now it's super frustrating. So I have a player who's not only not playing to his plane's full potential, I have a player who's not aware of what's going on and is doing the exact opposite of what we need to happen for the match to be won. And that's just bonkers frustrating, right? Like, oh my gosh, you know, help us out, help us out, help us out. So um, eventually, uh, thankfully, the bots move into the zone and there was enough time and uh you know we're able to kind of get ahead of things here but you know there's a there's a real sense of like oh my gosh when you're in this moment in the match like help help a brother out right play your plane to the best of its ability now we're headed to nowhere right we're just flying into nothingness which is weird in and of itself right so it was pretty frustrating for me in this match. And, you know, thankfully, we're, I was you know, able to do enough to get the win. I was able to do enough to get the win because, as it turns out, Kano actually didn't contribute a lick to this battle, um, which is the final frustration. I'm not sure what the game plan was. If there was there some sort of private goal? You know, the plane is already specialized. So you could make the argument, hey, the plane's not specialized. Uh, we're trying to get down get those personal points from shoot downs. Um, but, uh, as it turns out, this plane's already specialized. I have no way of knowing there, maybe there was some kind of internal goal here. And then I thought maybe he doesn't know how to play, you know, and that's what I thought from looking at this because there were zero sectors captured, but that's not the worst part. You can have a bad match and get blown out of the air and have zero sector captures, but Kano has 10,500 damage to ground targets using nothing but his cannons. I just need to pause there to let that sink in for a second. 10,500 damage using nothing but the 20 millimeter cannons. And that's why there were zero sectors captured. And this is a pilot who has a decent record. I mean, at least two sectors captured per match, 57% win rate. You know, we're not doing things in the lower tier. It's not like we're a tier two uh, player, right? We've got a, you know, it's a lot of Spitfires and Vampires, but that's cool. Um, those are not low tier aircraft. It's not like he's going and whacking bots every night, right? This is a player who I know knows what to do. And in this match, chose not to do what he needed to do. And the end result was a lot of frustration. And honestly, it should have been a loss. And by all, by, if it weren't for the, the luck of the bots, this can and should have been an absolute loss for us. And it, it's unfathomable to me. Like, this is my rant to you guys. And it's not really, you know, Cano so much as it is just, you know, the last couple of weeks boiled over. I, I implore you, play the actual game. Like, just play it. Play it the way it's meant to be played. Play it in the way, in such a way that you are concentrating on winning the game, right? Um, and it's not about how good you are. Um, it's about just playing, right? I don't care if you have a 47 or a 67% win rate. What I care about is, are you trying your best in the match, right? Um, and that's what's frustrating about this one is, you know, if, if this player had had uh, you know a handful of battles or a low win rate i'd say oh they they just don't know they're still learning right but when you're a pilot who knows and you have experience and you intentionally throw the match or try to throw the match um in this way i, I can't think of anything that gets me hotter under the collar i really can't um, it's one of the most irritating things i've encountered and i've encountered it multiple times right from people not putting stuff on their plane, people playing secondary side quests they've made up for themselves, or in this case, just I have no idea what was going on in their head. I have zero understanding of, of what the game plan was here. Um, it's really frustrating. So I'm imploring you on the behalf of the rest of the player base, play the dang game. Just 
play it, right? If you hit the battle button, go battle and, and do the best and win or loss, just do your best. And this is especially true on the North American server, by the way, because as you can see, we often get two V2s, right? It's, there's not a lot of six V6 or eight V8, you know, or that sort of thing. It's two V2, four V4. Um, and, and so the reality is one person not doing what they should be doing, one person playing whatever secret side quest they've made up in their head can absolutely torpedo the team in a heartbeat. Um, and uh, nothing can ruin anyone else's night or day uh, in this game faster um, than people just not playing the game, kind of refusing to play the game that's in front of them. So that's my rant. Thanks for letting me blow off some steam. Kano, nothing personal. If you see this, maybe you've got an answer for us, but just more in general, a plea to everyone, uh, play the game, uh, learn the game. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to help and teach and flight up and do whatever I can in that. But, you know, play the game. Uh, Wargaming designed this game to be played in a certain way. Same with tanks, same with warships, right? And uh, so, you know, if you play the game in your own way and it's a single player game, no problem. That's, that's your computer, your time, and, uh, and your fun. Uh, but when you're playing an online team-based competitive game um, and you're playing your own game, it generates nothing but hard feelings and, and, um, and frustration for those around you. So that's my encouragement today for anyone who's watching. Good luck. Try your best. If you need help, let me know. Let other players know. You know We're here for you. Uh, we want to make sure you have a great experience and we want to make sure we all have a great experience, which is why I have to put up videos like this as a reminder to everyone. So there you have it. Uh, good luck on the Red Menace. The TU-1 is a fun plane. It's not my favorite. I'm not a big heavy fighter guy, but it's very unique and very interesting and quite, you know, quite different in that sense. And if you like sniper plane planes, you're probably going to love it. If you don't have it already, it's a chance to get it for free. <clears throat> and so I'd, I'd recommend, yeah, if you want to do it, jump on it and go for it. Especially with a marathon not having any wonky missions in it. Pretty straightforward stuff. You know, you got 20 days. Uh, dive in and rock it out. So, um, and then, uh, you know, also, uh, if there's anything you'd like to see, planes or techniques or tactics, uh, let me know. Happy to jump in and do what I can to show you those. Um, and I'm going to continue to alternate between, um, you know, replays that I've done or matches I've done or lessons I think I can teach and replays from the player base because that seems to be popular. And uh, so I've got some more of those in the pipeline as well. Anyway, until then, uh, you know, enjoy yourself. Play the game the best of your ability, and uh, I hope to see you in the skies, and I hope that you have good luck and good hunting, and, uh, you know, do your best. <laughs>